name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, that instruct the hearts of your faithful by light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the same Spirit may be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lady Guadalupe, St. Joseph, Father Lan Terry, all God's angels and saints, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. How was the wine? How was the wine? Was the wine pretty good? How was the presence of Jesus and Mary? Even better? Did you talk to them? Hello? Okay, so you had a wonderful contemplation of Jesus and Mary and the turning of the water into wine. Turning your water into wine too. Amen? Okay, the brief uh, catechesis on prayer would be the following. Every contemplation we give to you, we're going to be giving you the biblical passage, but we're, get, we're going to be giving to you a beautiful artistic depiction of these miracles. So we invite you not only to read the biblical passage, but s spend some time, spend some time in which you're looking at the beauty of this image, okay? You've got this beautiful image here. There's no reason why, there's no hurry, you can spend as much time as you want contemplating that beautiful image. So this is a type, this is a vehicle that you can utilize to enrich your prayer life and it's using art, icons, pictures, paintings, statues. All of these are vehicles by which we enter into communion with God. And uh, phase, I don't think any of you are Jehovah Witnesses here. I don't think so. You probably would have gotten up and la left after the last talk, right? We're not Jehovah Witnesses. We're not iconoclasts. No. But rather, we're Catholics that believe in, in the importance of the physical world, using the physical world as a means by which we arrive at the invisible. In other words, we contemplate the beauty of creation to arrive at the beauty of the creator behind the creation. Amen? So that's my brief catechesis on prayer is utilizing the beauty of art and these paintings to enter into the life of Jesus and Mary. Okay, now your, your, your next contemplation is going to be the miracle and the healing of the, of the paralytic other paralytic. So let's take this beautiful, creative, 
I say even charming uh, miracle of Christ and let's try to enter into this and derive a lot of fruit from it. And I'd like to reiterate the fact is that we want to not simply be passive spectators, but we want to become active participant in the scene. We want to be, we want to be present there and allow our presence with Christ to, to touch us, to move us, to heal us, to transform us. There's a phrase in Spanish, dime con quien anda te digo quien eres. I like that. Dime con quien andas te digo quien eres. There's a, it's difficult to translate that one in English, but birds of the flock stick together is probably the best translation. Or we imitate those with whom we associate. So if you're spending time with Jesus, then we're going to become more like him. Spending time with Mary, we're going to become more like her. Right? That's logical. Okay, so I'm going to paint maybe four or five scenes within the whole miracle itself and allow the Holy Spirit to, of course, bring this to perfection within you. So Jesus has, he's, he's turned the water into the wine, he's out preaching, he's teaching, he's uh, exercising. And now we find Jesus most likely, most likely in the little house of Peter, okay? In Capernaum. And Jesus is preaching and he's, uh, he's captivating the people. His teaching is magnetic. He's like a human magnet. And the people have come from all over because they want to be with him. So they're, they're in the house there, but the house is just packed to the gills. And there's people outside the house. So Jesus is preaching and this, um, I always see, I always see some, some of the gospel scenes, I seem to be somewhat comical. You know? For example, the gospel today, Zacchaeus, for me, that's funny. This guy climbing a tree, you know? little guy hanging from a limb. <laughs> I see that there's some, there's some humor in that, you no? Know? The gospel today, uh, the, the, this one I seem somewhat humorous also, and you'll see why. Okay, there's this paralytic. Now it's not humorous at all, but you're going to see what happens is going to be somewhat humorous. So this paralytic, guy can't walk, he's got some friends who tell the paralytic who they love and they're, they commiserate with him. They're compassionate because this poor guy can't walk. So they hear that Jesus is in town, so they decide to take this paralytic to encounter Jesus. Now, in, in, unless you really contemplate, you, you just go through it very quick, but there's a, there's a lot of details in this, unless you spend an hour, you don't, well, it's kind of nice, no, he's, this paralytic is healed, let's move on to something else. There's a lot of details in this. Okay, the nature of being a paralytic is this. Okay, in the United States, 2019, we've got these handicapped vans, right? And they come to our parish, no? They didn't have them back then. <laughs> Henry Ford wasn't around until there, about 100 years ago, right? You didn't have the invention of the car until about 100 years ago. 
So how did this paralytic get to Jesus? Oh, you know, nurses or doctor, you ever carry dead weight on a stretcher? Try to imagine try to imagine carrying Father Larry in a stretcher, okay? <laughs> Father Craig, no? Father Dave. They're all a little bit bigger and heavier than I am, okay? Imagine doing that, no? How about if they had to carry it from Alhambra to Hawaiian Gardens, no? <laughs> or Al Alhambra to maybe Downey. Still a few miles, huh? Think that would have been easy? Hello? Wow. You're car carrying 200 pounds you got two people. Uh, you, I know what you're going to say. No, there were four of them, Father. Okay, okay. Well, still, right? Two in the back, two in the front, right? Think that would have been easy? So what do we see in the stretcher bearers? We see a lot of love, a lot of compassion, a willingness to suffer for their friend. Ah, oh, Father, they just lived, lived a half a block away. Well, how do you know? We don't know the distance, but it was probably, it probably took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to be able to carry that dead weight. Think they had calluses? How about, do you ever get a blister? You get a blister? I've gotten blisters over the past couple of years because when I take my, my men's group out, out on a picnic, most of the people are interested in, um, and eating and socializing. I do that also, but I get, I, I, I get the bat and I hit baseballs. No? And I can shoot those baseballs into the clouds. I'm a good hitter, huh? Call me, call me Rocket Man Broom. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> People are shocked that a priest can hit the ball so hard and high, you know? Uh, but I remember the, past, the first time I did I got, I got, I got blisters. You know why? Because you haven't managed, managed a bat in a couple of decades, no? So if these guys were not accustomed to carrying this dead weight, they probably ended up with some blisters. Maybe some bloody blisters, too, at that. But this is part of the, this is part of the gospel. The effort these men must have made to arrive at this little house in Capernaum. Then they arrived, another suffering. What was that? Friend? They can't get in. Why not? So the little house is just, it's just packed to the gills. What would you have done? Oh, shucks, let's go home. You may have done that. Well, at least we tried. They didn't give up. Now I admire their creativity. You know, I probably would have done, only a New Yorker would do this. Are you, are you listening? I've come in there, I call out, fire! All the people. <laughs> <laughs> they all clear out and we get in. <laughs> you don't know any New Yorkers, do you? No? Fire. <laughs> it probably wouldn't have been the easiest. They could have gotten in the, in the front door, huh? They didn't call that fire. 
They're more honest than the New Yorkers, huh? They have an idea. How about if we climb up on the roof? And it was uh, probably, it was not a roof made of bricks, but it would be a thatch roof, roof. We should be able to get in. But how on earth are they going to get to the top of the roof? There are no elevators, huh? And you couldn't just flip them up like a pancake. <laughs> or a waffle, no. <laughs> it just wouldn't happen that way, would it, no? So uh, it's, it, 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 it's not written, but it had, to hap- it had to be this way. There must have been a ladder nearby. And they had to kind of jostle and pulley the guy up, you know, he, with maybe a rope, and they had to maybe go up. Maybe the guy fell out a couple of times. It could have been, right? <laughs> Probably had some bruises, maybe some cuts, you know. And maybe he said, not only were they paralyzed, now we've got a broken leg, you know? <laughs> and he fell on his face and knocked one of his teeth out, okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> These guys probably didn't have a degree in lifting up people, lowering them down a thatch roof. You know? But what happens is they don't give up. And they're pulling them up one step at a time another step, they finally make it to the roof. And then what, what do they do to the roof? They break through the roof. So if this is Peter's house, you think he'd be happy with this? <laughs> you might say, well, Jesus is a carpenter, we're going to give him some work to do, huh? <laughs> so imagine this, there they are, they're on the top, and they're breaking through this roof. And Jesus is in there, and you see the leaves and the dust and the clots of dirt of earth falling upon them, falling upon Jesus. And then there's a breakthrough, and the sunlight is coming in, and this man is being lowered in front of Jesus. I know about you people, I see Jesus has a big smile on his face. He's not angry, disgruntled, and say, what are you doing this? I got my hair dirty now. Uh-uh. Jesus looks up, he's got a big smile on his face. And the guy's being lowered down closer and closer to Jesus. And then right away Jesus says, hey, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Then you got the chismosos, right? You know them? Los criticones, no? They start, to, they start to condemn Jesus in their thoughts, but Jesus is able to read their thoughts. If Jesus reads their mind, he can. And what does Jesus say? He says, look, to prove to you that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. He says to the man, the paralytic, get up, take your mat, and just walk out of this little hut. In front of all the people, this paralyzed man who couldn't, maybe couldn't walk his whole life, or most of his life, he gets up and he walks right out the door with his mat underneath his arm. Wow! What a miracle! There's a lot in this. Maybe we're going to have to have two hours for this one, huh? This is jam packed with beautiful gems, diamonds, rubies <laughs> for your picking. But let me give you three ideas for your own application. First is this.
Do you know any paralytics in your life? Could there be spiritual paralytics? Hello? Do you know any spiritual paralytics in your life? Could it be a son? Could it be a daughter? Could it be a husband? Could it be a wife? Could it be a mother-in-law? Could it be a colleague? Could it be a fellow worker? Could it be a cousin? Could it even be a friend? My friends, we are surrounded by paralytics. So that's the first point of your meditation. Where, where is the mat where you can place those paralytics? Are you looking at me? That's the mat. Is Jesus, does he come to visit that mat? He comes every time the priest celebrates the mass. Does the priest lift up anything? The paralytic is lifted down, the priest is lifting up. Is there a connection there? Is Jesus, Jesus is getting weak as the years go on, or is he just as strong now as he was 2,000 years ago? All depends on one word, faith. Remember Little Boy, the movie, the movie, Little Boy, Little Boy, Little Boy. Faith, they can move the mountains. If your faith was as big as a mustard seed, you could say to that mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Lord, strengthen my faith. Second point for your meditation. Who is the paralytic that's closest to you? I'll give you a hint. Do you ever look in the mirror in the morning? (laughs) Not yet? Every time you look in the mirror, you are contemplating a paralytic. We are the paralytic. Not by chance did I open up my talk last night saying that I parked in the handicap zone. Why? Because I am a spiritual paralytic. So don't call the tow truck to move my car. I am a spiritual paralytic. But there's a healer. That healer is the divine physician. His name is Jesus Christ. Saints Bene, sana e salva. He heals and he saves. Then I like the last, the last point. That you can meditate upon is this. Are you listening? Do you prefer to be in the wheelchair or pushing the wheelchair? Do 
and spend a whole hour meditating upon that one question. Do you prefer to be in the wheelchair or pushing the wheelchair? Most of you came in here walking, huh? Would you prefer to be coming here in walking or to, to be wheeled in here? Pray over that. And maybe we should, as we go deeper into the life of Christ, his miracles, not only should we, we should be filled with joy, but I think we have to learn to thank God more. Nine days is going to be Thanksgiving, right? Is that right? But shouldn't every day be Thanksgiving? What does the word Eucharist mean? Thanksgiving. So this is, a, is for me, I, I, I love this passage. I, there's so much in this passage. And if you're open, God can speak to you in a thousand different ways. But the key is, we want to go from the head to the heart. We want to be present in this. We really want Jesus to be real to us. Beg the Blessed Virgin Mary that you'll be able to go from the head to the heart, from the head to the heart to the feet, allowing this to transform your lives. Mary, health of the sick, pray for us. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Saint Ignatius, pray for us.